grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us pray. O oh God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all the suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. to give up when faith requires persistence over the long haul, especially when our prayers seem unanswered and injustice appears to rule the day. We humbly admit our weakness and rely on God's strength to persevere as we ask God's forgiveness using the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, God, our, our judge, judge and Redeemer. Redeemer. We confess that we have tried to hide from you, for we have done wrong. We have lived for ourselves and apart from you. We have turned from our neighbors and have refused to bear the burdens of others. We have ignored the pain of the world and passed by the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. In your great mercy, forgive our sins and free us from selfishness, that we may choose your will and obey your commandments through Jesus Christ our Savior.
relentlessly God seeks us out with abundant grace and boundless mercy. God forgives us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pray. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. Amid all the changing words of our generation, speak your eternal word that does not change. Then may we respond to your gracious promises with faithful and obedient lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In these days, they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word.
Hear now what the Spirit is saying to the church in Paul's second letter to Timothy. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you have learned it, and from and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead and in view of his appearing and his kingdom? I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, Carry out your ministry fully. Holy wisdom, holy word. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not give up. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for the people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, and later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet, because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? Will he, I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. When I retired last November, after 20 years with Texas Health Resources and over 37 total years as a hospital chaplain, the hospital gave me a farewell, celebration, thank you kind of thing. Uh, the hospital president was one of the several people who spoke, and in his remarks, he called me a bulldog, and several people laughed. Now, his characterization surprised me and honestly hurt my feelings. I don't like bulldogs, and I have a rather negative view of what they represent. I picture them as vicious and aggressive, and the implication, therefore, being that I was mean and aggressive. After that day, I made a point to study the bulldog personality. It's actually a thing. 
and I have come to see that there is another way to take his comment. Like a bulldog, I was persistent when I saw something that needed to be improved or changed. I was willing to compromise within reason, but I would not let an agenda be forgotten when the leadership was ready to move on to other issues they saw as more pressing. I was a tenacious proponent for things like having end-of-life care rooms, more family-focused, comfortable ICU waiting areas, the development of a palliative care program, finding creative ways to support our staff, and always being a voice for ways to include faith in our work, just to name a few. A bulldog, therefore, is someone who is tough, tenacious, and gets things done, even in the face of apathy and adversity. They are strong, intent on a purpose, good at closing the deal. They don't give up when the going gets tough and are useful to have on your side as they don't back down even when the odds are against them. A bulldog is someone who possesses obstinate courage, persistence. Now, we live in a world where it often takes a squeaky wheel to be heard above the fray. Such noise can be irritating, and to get it to stop, we sometimes just give in. We do this with our children, our spouses, our workplaces, our business, maybe even our church, any place that we feel nagged and badgered. So, I recently got some new windows. After a long, long day of them being put in, and my going around constantly to clean up on the inside all the mess they left behind, the salesman set me down at 7 p.m., and gave me the pitch to buy something else. He kept on and on, and it was getting later and later, and he reduced the price three times. Well, I just wanted him to leave, and I finally said so. <laughs> Things like that happen to all of us. Those cold calls from solar energy places and the car warranties are never ending, no matter how rude you have to be, as you say no and move to hang up. But persistence can also be good when it accomplishes the purpose for which it's set out. We have the saying that when the going gets tough, the tough get going. We persist through chemo. We persist in a difficult marriage. We persist through ongoing mass shootings and political division. We persist through economic instability and inflation. We persevere. We don't give up. We cling to hope and believe for something better. We do not surrender. Now, my family used to watch the fun movie Galaxy Quest. Any of y'all seen that? Uh, we watched it every summer when we went on vacation. It's a good Tim Allen comedy. And it's based around a TV show of space travelers whose mantra is, never give up, never surrender. They would say this and fist bump their chest. So my family began to say this when things were hard and there was a need to persevere. Never give up, never surrender, be persistent. So how does all of this connect with the gospel parable for today? The story is often called the persistent widow and the unjust judge. The one in this parable is seeking justice, and she is also a widow, which makes her as powerless as one could be in those days. The situation is even worse because the judge is not only powerful, but also corrupt. He has no real interest in justice and doesn't want to even listen to the widow. He does not fear God, and he doesn't care what anybody thinks about him. But the widow keeps coming back to see him again and again to plead her case. 
relentlessly she comes, never giving up hope that she might attain justice. Finally, the unjust judge grants her request. Why? Because she kept bothering him, and he was afraid she would eventually attack him. Really? <laughs> her unrelenting voice for justice was more powerful than she even realized. Now, this story of persistence is told as an example of how we are to pray always and not give up. That is perhaps the deeper message we are to take in. That even when we do not get results or our prayers seem unanswered, we are to keep praying. Have you ever prayed for so long about something that you wonder why you're doing it and struggle not to give up on God? We know that prayers are not always answered, at least not in the specific way that we had asked, and yet we still want God. We want to believe that God will intercede at our urging and do what we want God to do. The perfunctory or even at times non-existent prayer life of us, the believers, may be due to our faith having lost trust in God to respond when we don't see results. I believe any theology that teaches us to pray long enough or hard enough to get what we want, to get what we want, ends up being misleading and hurtful. This is the opposite of the role of faith, which is to decenter the ego, not give over to its desires. We are encouraged to pray always and not give up in the brief statement of faith, which proclaims the Spirit has given them the courage to do so, to pray without ceasing in a broken and fearful world. This parable is therefore not about answered and unanswered prayer, but about persistence. It's not about what we get from prayer, but how we are to keep praying no matter the result. Prayer centers us, forces us to look beyond what we can see and control. Prayer changes the one who prays. Now, another issue in this parable is about justice being served. If this judge, as corrupt and ruthless as he is, still grants justice to the relentless widow, how much more will God, who is gracious and merciful, loving and faithful, respond to the needs of those who come to God in prayer? Trusting that truth, we can stay at it. We can keep praying and praying and praying with faith that our lives are in God's hands. We can count on God to come down on the side of justice every time. Count on God to hear those who have no voice, no power, no influence. Count on God to be with those who have nowhere else to turn. Count on God, not always to grant our requests, but to hear with loving patience the persistent prayers of our hearts. We tend to think that God is being compared to the judge in this parable, finally relenting when we persist. But the verses themselves tell us God is not like this. Maybe God is the one being persistent with us. Persistent in loving us, pursuing us, forgiving us, standing with us, holding us up, being our strength in times of weakness. God's love for us is unshakable and everlasting, even though most times we don't deserve it. Now, there are many modern stories of the good that can happen when people persist. Everyone around the world knows the brand Starbucks. You may have had one this morning. 
It's one of today's most recognized symbols, but it didn't have an easy start. Howard Schultz, the founder of Starbucks, went to 242 banks looking for his original loan. After a year of rejections, he was able to secure the $400,000. That's all he was asking for, $400,000. And today, the brand employs people all around the world. Everyone knows the iconic brand, Disney. But the story of how Walt Disney created the Disney empire is one of persistence. As a young man, Walt Disney was fired from a local newspaper as his boss thought he lacked creativity. As a failed animation company went under, he was barely able to pay his bills and even had to resort to eating dog food to survive. With his last few dollars, Walt made his way to Hollywood to try and make it big. Unfortunately, his early time in Hollywood was just as bad. He was told Mickey Mouse would fail. Faced constant rejection and seemed destined to never succeed. But Walt persisted and went on to grow the company we know and love with all the amusement parks and so many wonderful films we love to watch. There's so many stories of persistence. I can't name them all, from Colonel Sanders, Thomas Edison, to Oprah Winfrey, to Ray Kroc with McDonald's, and J.K. Rowling with the Harry Potter series. These were all bulldogs in one way or another. So I think I'm in pretty good company. The final words of this parable are kind of a warning. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will anyone persevere in prayer and not give up on faith until that day? We must ask ourselves if we can hold on to hope in God's coming reign when all will be well and all will be whole. When justice will finally be served, even though right now we see the opposite and our prayers are not answered as we had hoped, I say to you, people of God, that God will help you stand and be counted as one of the faithful. We are capable of more than we think possible with perseverance, hard work, and belief in ourselves and our God. So don't quit when obstacles arise. Persist. Trust. Stand up for justice and what is right until it is accomplished. Never give up on your dreams. Keep going. Keep striving. Keep persisting. Keep praying. May God bless the bulldog in each of us. Amen.
Would you please stand and join me in affirming our faith as stated in the Nicene Creed. We believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic Church. Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come to the time of intercessions and offer our prayers, I will share these with you from our weekly news. Uh, Joyce Jones has had her laparoscopic surgery for diverticulitis. And uh, what I saw on Facebook is she's recovering nicely. Uh, your prayers for fast recovery. Uh, re Prayers for Nancy Stevens, who is recovering from a bad cold and cough. Uh, she's going to be alone more now because Susan is working from the office, uh, not from home. Uh, prayers for Karen Wolf, who has had uh, knee surgery, and prayers for a quick recovery. Barb Peterson is requesting prayers for Steve, Lori, and Charlie Reed. Lori's Barb's niece. Her husband, Steve, that's Lori's uh, husband, Steve, has been through rounds of chemo and radi radiation and will have had surgery by now to remove a tumor uh, involving his companion. So let us pray. God, we lift up Myra to you. What a scary thing for her and for all those sitting around her. To know that one moment you're okay and the next you just can't stand, can't think, can't breathe. We're thankful for the paramedics who came so quickly. Bless them as they care for her even now. And be with her as she uh, made the wise decision to go to the hospital, to get fluids, to to restore her body to better health. These things can happen to any of us. And I am humbled and honored to have witnessed a congregation who jumped 
to the occasion, who stepped in to care for one they love, just as they would do for anyone else here. And so we lift up Myra to you. Be with her, watch over her, strengthen her, heal her, we pray. Are there other, other concerns? Uh, are there concerns on Zoom? So Joyce is doing well. Any other concerns or joys? Kara. Thank you. Thank you, Kara. For the Zoom folks, in case that wasn't clear, the Shagru family is asking for prayers in times of physical transition and relocation with no real clear destination at this time, but lots of hope. Any other concerns, Joyce? All right. Let us pray. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. God, in your mercy, For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. God, in your mercy. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal justice system. God, in your mercy, for all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city, or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. God, in your mercy, for those in our congregation, for those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work that, with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of the others. God, in your mercy, for those who have taught us faith, and now rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who share the gospel through word and deed. God, in your mercy, with grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now David Miller will share with us a moment for stewardship.
we joined this church 38 years ago. At that time, our daughter Joanne was a year and a half old. She just had her 40th birthday, if that gives you any indication of how long it has been and how time has flown. We arrived at this church and immediately felt welcomed and taken into a family. It was where we had felt called to be, and it was home. But I also discovered that you can't just be at home in this church. You have to do things. People expect you to do things. So I joined the choir and offered to help with the youth choir by playing my flute. That's where my talents were, and uh, I was using my time and my talents, right? Not quite. I was asked to teach ninth grade confirmation class. Now, you need to understand, I was not a teacher. I never considered myself a teacher. But I kind of gulped and said, okay. And I followed that up by teaching two- and three-year-olds and then kindergarten and first grade with Sarah Jo. I uh, taught seventh and eighth grade, and then I came back around to teach confirmation again. I took high school youth to Senate advance and kind of rode herd on them. Another thing I did not know that I had the talent for. And I participated in youth mission trips. I have to tell you, I did it as the cook, not one of the construction crew. I did actually know what my limits were. I also moderated uh, the mission committee when Ruth Batchelder and Jeannie Stone put their heads together and found this little mission, this little orphanage down in Mexico. And I found myself for the next couple of three years trying to channel all of the enthusiasm this church showed for that project. I was asked to be a deacon and was part of the group that worked hard to keep the church connected in a time of COVID. And lately I've served on the mission task, study task force and the pastor nominating committee, another area that I would never have dreamed that I could do. Like I said, it's hard to be a Sunday morning passive Christian in this church. You really have to work at being a passive Christian. In the last six months, though, I've come around to why we first came to this, were attracted to this church. A feeling of family and community. Through the thoughts and prayers and practical help that the support of this congregation Sarah Jo and I have dealt with the time since my cancer diagnosis. The deacons have adopted this little advice, device to remind people that of the care that this congregation has. I don't think you can see it very well from where you are, but it's a circle of people surrounding a candle, and it symbolizes the circle of people who surround us in times of need and in times of joy. And so this church for me has been both a group, a group that surrounded me with their love and their care from the very beginning and continues to do so, and a church that through, who, through, well, sorry, and a church that is the voice of, serves as the voice of God, calling me to stretch myself in areas that I never knew I could do. And I thank that. Thank God for that, finding this place. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you.
you today to come to the table to be renewed and strengthened through this feast so that you will not give up. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy God, creator of the universe, with joy we praise you and give you thanks. You brought light from darkness and drew land from the sea. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You promised yourself in a covenant with us. You told us your purpose in your law and called for justice through the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful to your people. Therefore, we join our voices with all those who sing your praise. Holy, holy God, our God, heaven earth are full, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. you, most holy God, for the gift of your son, Jesus. He told your story, healed the sick, and welcomed the stranger. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. Rising from the dead, he overcame death, the firstborn of the new creation. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ and offering ourselves to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them the body and blood of Christ that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, make us one with him and one another. Send us out to live for others as Christ lived for us. And keep us faithful until we feast with him in glory. All thanks and praise to you, O triune God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father in heaven,
Because there is one loaf, we, many as we are, are all one body. For it is one loaf of which we partake. When we break the bread, is it not sharing in the body of Christ? When we give thanks over the cup, is it not sharing in the blood of Christ? <coughs> holy things are holy people. One is holy, one is Lord, Jesus Christ to the glory of God. The gifts of God for the people of God. you to come.
body of Christ, the bread of life. Body of Christ, the bread of life. Body of Christ, the bread of life. The Spirit of God. the bread of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, 
You have made us one with all your people, in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life, and renewed us for your service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup to be his faithful disciples, so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom, and our love be your love, reaching out into the life of the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Yeah.